This is Ace with Rock Revolt Magazine, and I'm here with Mr. Phil Labonte of All That Remains. How's it going today, sir? Going good, going good. Good, good, man. So uh, you guys have uh, had a pretty good, uh, you know, mid-2017 so far. You guys have put out your new album, Madness, that's uh, been going pretty good reviews. And then you guys dropped kind of a kind of a bombshell on everybody with that cover of The Thunder Rolls, man. Where did that come from? Uh, I, I've been against art books for a long, long, long time. Um, when I was a kid growing up, and, and not really a kid kid, but like, you know, when I, when I was a teenager and older, uh, about the only thing me and my mom could agree on was, <laughs> was Garth Brooks. Like, <laughs> that, to me, that was like not too bad, and, and, uh, and she was in the country, so that was, that was about the only thing we could, we could actually get in the car and listen together. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I've, I've loved the song for a long time and, and I've been kind of itching to do it for a while and I brought it up to the guys a few times and, you know, either we didn't do a cover or, or it was, uh, it was, you know, outvoted or whatever. And then the time I was kind of like, we got to do this. This is really good. And, and, uh, Howard, our producer was into it and our management was into it too. So we were like, all right, let's do it. And, and you know, it came out cool. <laughs> Oh yeah, and like say, you've had a million views on it in a week, man. It's it's people are, uh, you know, and I've read a lot of the views. People are either digging it or they're not digging it, but all that matters is they're watching it. Yeah, I mean, it's it's actually right now it's it's been two, like I think tomorrow will be two full weeks and it's over two million now. And, oh Jesus! And so yeah, I know. I mean, it, to me, it's crazy. I couldn't believe it. Um, you know, so. Hey, you know, if people dig it, that's cool. You know, it's, it's, it's a, it's a great song. And I think that it speaks to, uh, you know, the quality of the song, the fact that people are responding to it. Because I'm one of those guys that think if it's a good song, it doesn't really matter, you know, what kind of genre it's in. You know, you see, you see R&B and country music flip-flopping back and forth all the time. Yeah. And there's so many bands that take, you know, something that's kind of a pop song and turn it into something kind of heavy. So the, the genre is not really the important thing if you're, if you're looking for good songs, it's, it's finding the, the really quality songs that are going to, that are going to hit with people. I think. Right. And then, and you know, and that's kind <laughs> of your guys' label, the All That Remains label, you know, calling card is we don't really care about a genre. We are going to play what we want to play, whether it's hardcore metal to more mainstream to whatever works for you and is good for you at the time. You guys really don't care. You're going to put it out there. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of what we've always done. And, you know, there's people that are going to say that that's not, you know, that they don't like that, that, that we should only do one thing. We just kind of say, well, you know, start your own band. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I mean, I mean, that's, that's really what it is. It's like we're, we're musicians before we're, you know, anything else, you know, so we want to do something different and we, we have the, the right to do it. And we got people that are in the band that are skilled enough to be able to, you know, write stuff in different styles and, and we're kind of not afraid to take a risk. And, and so, you know, that's, that's what you get. You know? Right. You know, and you know, a lot of people like to scream, Oh, you're a sellout. You're a sellout. But I've always seen it as how can you be a sellout when you're being true to yourself? Honestly, sticking to one genre, one style would be more of a sellout. Wouldn't you think? Yeah. I mean, if you, you know, I mean, I, I, I understand why people stick to the one thing. You know, you've got an audience and you feel like you owe your audience a certain thing. And, and I totally get that. Um, and I also get why people say sell out because they're like, oh, this band used to be heavier. This band used to be, you know, ideological or whatever the, whoever the person calling you sell out is, you know, whatever they think you, you sold out for. But now it's doing something different than they would have done or something that they think the purists would approve of. And so, so the, the motivation must have been money, and uh, you know I don't I don't subscribe to that. I think that people, I mean human beings in general, are way more nuanced than that. You know, so you know for me it's 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 we're in a band, and we play music for a living, and you know we we every time we've kind of done something we're not supposed to do, it's worked out really well for us. Like you know when we put out uh, you know we put out a, a <laughs> heavy record in in 2006 called The Fall of Ideals, and then two years later, we put out another record that had a song that was kind of a radio rock song, and we got a lot of hell for that, you know, you're not supposed to do that if you're if you're a quote-unquote metal band, and that did well, and then, uh, you know, a few years later, we put out, like, a real ballad, like, actual, like, power ballad, 80s-style kind of power ballad, and 
we got a lot of garbage for that, and you're not supposed to do that, but that song now has like 40 million views on YouTube. It was number two at Rock Radio Forever. So, I mean, it, when we try something new and try to, to, to do something that's different from what we've done, historically, it, you know, it's worked out pretty well. So people can say what they want, but, I mean, we've managed to make a career out of this for, for you know, well over a decade as the music industry has died around us, you know, in the, in the, in the hardest times to be in the music industry, uh, you know, we've managed to, you know, make a career and, and do pretty well. So I'm, I'm, I'm pretty excited about, you know, the things that are going on with all the remains. Absolutely. And I mean, honestly, one of my favorite songs by you guys is, um, What If I Was Nothing. So I guess that makes me a weirdo because, you know, that is a ballady song. So, you know, <laughs> that's one of my favorite. It's a great song, man. I'm, I'm a lyrical guy. I love lyrical content. You can only get so much double bass and chugging guitars and shit. I, I love the lyrical content. So it's, it's perfect, man. That's my kind of thing. So I appreciate the fact that you guys change your style to what is best for you at that time. Because, I mean, look at, like, Disturbed. They went on hiatus because they're like, hey, man, our last four albums sounded exactly the same. We've got to shake it up. People get it. You know, they yeah. it's great. So, good job, man. Congrats. Thank you. And actually, thank you for changing your style. <laughs> Thanks, <sir. laughs> I mean, that's really the best way I could put it up. I mean, you know. Now, you guys are going to be uh, getting ready to go out on a little tour of Falling in Reverse uh, this fall. How's that? You guys getting ready for that? Or what's going on? How are you prepping? Well, we, we got a, uh, I mean, we're busy basically, I think this weekend we have off. Actually, I know this weekend we have off. And then we're basically busy every weekend. We're playing a bunch of shows with Five Finger in, uh, in September. And then at the end of September, we start with the, the following in reverse for a couple of weeks. And then, uh, we're looking at, at, uh, something a little bit later in the year as well, but I can't, and the year's not announced yet. So I'm just right. going to talk about it really. Right. What What's it going to be like playing with sharing the stage with Five Finger again, and uh, you not actually in front of the mic? Uh, well, I mean, we played a couple of shows even in the past, like this past weekend and stuff. And I mean, they're all great guys. You know, they're all really cool, nice dudes, and they're all uh, you know good friends. So it's it's a lot of fun anytime we can play with them. They they called me out, and uh, I did a a song with them a couple nights. And if they ask me again, I'll go and do a song with them again. You know, I mean. They're they're a big band. They bring in a lot of people. So any kind of anytime we can get in front of that audience, you know, it's it's really great for us. So it's a it's all it's all good stuff. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you if you actually why well, since you're playing with them if you were going to get out if you guy if you did anything with them. So that's cool, man. I mean, and you know, I'm sure they appreciated you stepping in in a time of need and helping them out. So I mean, it's it's great to see bands like help each other out instead of try to you know be against each other it's all one community one family so it's always good to see you guys help each other out yeah you know the music industry you know the, the it can get kind of catty sometimes for some people but i'm and i try not to get into that stuff too too much i mean i've got a big mouth and everything but if i replied to all the stuff i thought was stupid or, or every remark that i thought was dumb that someone said that's all i'd ever do is spend my time worrying about other people and that's not how i want to spend my time no, no no come on no you're not you're not known for you know speaking your mind and being well spoken about things come on <laughs> uh, you know i mean some people might think so hey man i i like <laughs> i said it's all, i'm down with a man because people are just too God damn sensitive nowadays, and they can't handle anything. It's just I, I don't yeah. get it. I just don't get it at all. Yeah, I mean, you, you see the other day, Stephen Mnuchin's wife, who's a smoke show, like took someone on Twitter to task, you know, and, and just kind of laid it down. And I think that you know because they've been criticizing her for something, and I I think that's kind of okay. You know, I mean, people people are real to, to go ahead and be like, oh. You know, this upsets me. I think it's kind of okay when people are like, I don't care, or, you know, give something a little extra lip because they're, they're getting upset about something that really is pretty inconsequential. So, and I'm not sure if that particular Mnuchin issue was inconsequential with them using public funds. That's kind of a, a dumb thing. But at the same time, like, you know, if she, if she felt justified in, in talking smack back, she probably wasn't in the wrong. <laughs> yeah, I mean, hell, even, even if she didn't feel justified, who gives a shit, man? I mean, sometimes you just got to get it off your chest, and people need to have, you know, like I said, they need to be put to task a little bit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, there's a lot of people. People are so quick to say that they're they're upset by something. I don't think there are enough people out there that, that say, I don't care fast enough. 
Right. So it's, it's not the end of the world. Absolutely, absolutely. Sure. Now, if you guys out on tour here, man, you guys are uh, celebrating, of course, you know, supporting Madness, which is unbelievable album. It's been being uh, played all over uh, Octane, everywhere you can get. It's, it's something that we hear everywhere. I mean, is that something you guys are going to be pushing for a while, or are you guys already working on new stuff? Uh, you know, funny enough, we actually have, me and, me and uh, Mike and all, we got together a couple times. You don't have, like, anything that we worked out, but... Um, we did get together and, and kind of came, you know came up with some some riffs and stuff and and so we'll see uh, we'll, we'll see how how that goes and if we get any songs put together before it's time to actually start writing another record but we usually focus on on just promoting the record we're working you know we're on you know at the time so the fact that we we even got together and, and you know played each other a couple of riffs is kind of a, a step in the right direction for us already so right on. Well, so, so what do you guys do when you're out there on the road, man, city to city? Is it just rest and relaxation? What do you guys do working on new music? What are you guys doing when you're going from city to city here? Uh, it depends. Individual, each individual kind of has their own deal, but um, because we've been doing so many, we've been doing a lot of like weekends and fly dates and stuff. We don't really, we're not around each other all week. And we don't have a lot of downtime around each other. So normally, uh, you know, there's a lot of a lot of going to the gym, sound checking, and then we kind of just wait around for the show. <laughs> right on, right on, absolutely. Yeah. All right, now, when, is there going to be a Garth Brooks like duet? I mean, you guys going to hook up? What's going on? It's got to happen. Uh, I would, I would love to to meet Garth Brooks. Uh, never mind sing with Garth Brooks. So uh, I, don't, I don't know if any of that's going to happen, but uh, I, I think it's pretty cool. I think you might have heard the songs. I think someone in our management company knows his manager. So someone might have showed it to him, which would be kind of cool. But he might not have listened to it. He might have been like, oh, that's cool. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt that, man. He seems like a pretty all right guy. You see all the stories from his shows and stuff. So I don't know. I bet he probably yeah. appreciated it, man. It'd be cool. It'd yeah. be cool. You know, they say imitation's the, you know, sincerest form of flattery. So, you know, I'm sure it's something he definitely dug. So absolutely. Yeah, if I if I hear about a, a band covering all their names song, I'll usually take a look or take a listen, you know. So, yeah, you got to kind of be interested on how they did, what's it like, and and again, you got to be you kind of like, man, that's cool. They they took the time to do one of our songs. That's great, you know. Yeah, definitely. Hell yeah. Well, man, you got like I said, you guys are gonna be hitting. You're actually gonna be hitting pretty about twenty minutes for me in Lawrence, Kansas, with Fall the Reverse here in September. So we'll be definitely catching that show. It's gonna be uh, good to see you guys oh. again around the Kansas City area. So um, before we let you go, man, is there anything you want to say to the fans? Any any message you want to give them? Uh, just uh, check me out on on the internet on at Phil that remains on Instagram and Twitter, and you can find me on Facebook. Just Phil Labonte. Right on, man. Check out the band. All the room. it's uh, a Twitter is at atrhq, and uh, on Instagram it's just uh, uh, Instagram slash All that remains. Right on, man. Well, Phil, I greatly appreciate you taking some time out with us today, man. Uh, go enjoy the rest of your day, and uh, we'll see you soon out here on the road. All right, man, thanks. All right, thanks, Phil.